Greetings from Dystopia, episode 16. <laughs> I started it a second ago by saying scenes from Dystopia. <laughs> we are out in the woods again today. It's This is my happy place. Um, <laughs> sadly, there's no fishing here. Uh, no fish to catch. We are at the bottom end of the trail that I run. Um, actually, it runs right here through behind us through the woods. Goes behind you guys that way and back out to the old road. Um, I found this spot, figured it was relatively calm and quiet. The only noise we have is the road is just about a quarter mile behind us here. The highway. Um, little two lane, nothing major. <clears throat> it's a pretty day as I'm sure you can see. The sun is out. We are looking, I don't, probably right now we're about 68, 70 degrees. Very middle of the road humidity, so it actually feels like a really nice day. Um, kind of walking around looking for some trillium, see what other wildflowers are up. <clears throat> I took some photos yesterday. I'll try and get those posted up tonight or tomorrow of a bloom I found of blue. I forgot what that one's called. It's a little blue flower. Um, and then a whole bunch of the blood root. Um, yesterday I went out to look at an owl and check the nest and just check on the owlet and saw these all these flowers and grabbed a few photos of them with the big camera. So I'll get those posted up later on. Um, I got a private message. We'll actually talk about that in a little bit when I get back to the van. If you guys, you know, if you have questions, you can PM them to me. That's fine, especially if it's something personal. But if it's a, a general topic, I would almost rather you post them on either my link to this video on Facebook or on the video itself so that it becomes more of a community-type discussion. The, the questions were about the van. If I could spend a little bit of time talking about how I'm going to rig it up or how I typically rig it up for the summer and I will walk you guys through some of that today the questions from this person were more about what I do for navigation and communication in the van so those are usually the first two things to go in anyway so we'll go over that here in a little bit I also brought one of the 10 watt solar panels so we will hook it up I'll put a voltage and load meter on it and we'll charge the phone so you can just see you know a little bit of how it works these two panels that I bought you can consider more as a trickle charger than a full-out charge but that was my intent was for them to charge smaller battery packs from the 15,000 uh, milliamp hour all the way down to the little I think my smallest one is a thousand um, the idea is just to charge those up in an hour or so um, it will charge a full-size phone in an hour and a half from the charge so you, obviously the current output is pretty good good enough to do that so we'll talk again about navigation communication and the solar panels here in a little bit and that'll be the biggest topics for today um, I did get some feedback uh, a couple of you don't necessarily like the 30 minute format you like a shorter format so I'll see what I can do about getting these a little shorter over time. Uh, my trick with doing that though is we would be limited down to one subject. Um, and even then one subject sometimes is going to take half an hour to an hour for, especially once we get into the Raspberry Pi stuff. Um, and stuff like that. Anyways, a couple of you commented on the format styles one of you really enjoys the walk and talks like I did yesterday or the initial Facebook live videos um, one person likes the when I'm sitting in the van because they said my <laughs> personality seems a little bit more relaxed when I'm in the van so format is kind of up to you guys you tell me what works for you and we can work it out also, when I get back to the van, I'm going to switch and use the microphone. I didn't bring it today because I couldn't find another, find another cold shoe mount to mount the mic on the phone um, or on the phone stand on that uh, ultra pod I showed you guys. <laughs> I 
I used to love riding motorcycles and I've had a couple of the Japanese power bikes over the years. I've had dirt bikes, I've had enduro bikes. I just don't probably like cars. I don't as I get older, I don't get the loud mufflers. I don't get racing like hell. There's always the argument that loud pipes save lives. Um, I don't think that's what it is. I think it's common sense of both drivers and vehicle, car drivers and cycle riders. If you lane split in a motorcycle, you're going to, sooner or later, it's an accident waiting to happen. Don't do it. I know the law in some states says you can lane split. Don't do it. Again, <laughs> Exercise your noggin, take responsibility for yourself. Don't let other people, don't rely on other people to be responsible for you. All right, that's it. <laughs> I'm gonna go out and finish my walk here. Um, still have about 1900 steps today. Um, I decided I'm gonna hold off on running for a few days and give this uh, adductor a chance to heal because it definitely feels better today not having ran yesterday so I'll continue stretching resting ice and heat and just give it a break and see if we can get it to heal up and then I'll go back to running again Blue Jays I don't know if you've been able to hear them or not the whole time but there's a downy woodpecker in the tree about eight feet behind me here or eight feet behind you guys <laughs> It's definitely a blue jay. For a minute, I thought it might have been a pileated woodpecker. I keep getting messages. It's pileated. We grew up calling them pileated, so it's going to be stuck in my head for a while. All right, guys, I'm going to go back and finish my walk here, and uh, see you back at the van. All right, so I'm back in the van now. As you can probably see, I brought out one of the 8x8 matrix lights today so you can see the difference that it makes as far as overall fill and light quality. Um, I don't actually like it that high. I like it more around this area. So other than the reflection in my glasses, it looks a little bit more natural light-wise, you know. Um, but yeah, I rarely, rarely ever use these things. Um, we're gonna shoot the rest of today using the beast cage, if I can get it to stay level. <laughs> the Ultra Pod is not designed to hold this much weight. Um, I will snap a picture later of the particular setup right now, but the way you're looking at me, the phone is mounted in the beast cage. The directional video mic that I showed you is on the top center. The light is on the top left. So now you can see it. So that's with the light on. That's with the light off. You can see there's a little bit of a variation. Just a little bit, not much. Um, so yeah, we don't necessarily need the light. I just got to find my balance point here for the ultra pod. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Let me get set up here. I'm going to place in... The radio and the iPad and the GPS and then I'll come back to you guys and shoot a little video okay so just a quick rundown here this is the radio I use for general communications at the moment it's not active because I don't have the hotspot enabled on my phone or my other hotspot <laughs> in the van um, basically this particular mode right now we're using Zello for two-way communication. Most of you probably know Zello already. If you don't, it's essentially walkie-talkies over a cellular network. Um, this unit has a lot more capability to it, which we can go into on another video. But So summer mode is the radio is in, my iPad for GPS navigation. Um, using Gaia, which is an app I've talked about before. Up on the dashboard, up front there, is the Bluetooth GPS from Dual. I believe that one, the motto is the GPS 150. 
Um, I'll post all this stuff in the comments below. So yeah, that's basic summer configuration for communications and navigation. Three parts. I also have onboard navigation as well. This one typically marks my fishing spots. Or in this case, you're seeing trails that I've hiked out through here. In this particular area, I can go to a wider view. And you can see some more of the trails. More trails that I've hiked. And as we shrink out or um, zoom out, you can start to see more areas that I've hiked. Different portions of trails. And then I won't go out too far, but I can zoom back out and go up into Wisconsin. And that's about as close as I'm zooming in. <laughs> Nobody gets to see my fish in holes. <laughs> All right, guys, catch back up in a bit. And just one more note. This unit, you'll see there's, there is a cellular antenna on it. Um, <clears throat> this unit normally has a SIM card in it, and when the SIM card is in it, it becomes the hotspot for navigation and communication. Um, right now, the SIM is in another radio that I'm experimenting with. Um, there's something to be said for two-way radio over 3G, 4G, and pretty soon 5G. The, those of you who have used... Uh, Blackberry and Nextel, you, you learn the advantage of the two-way over that system. This one takes it a bit farther because we can view each other's location on a map. So we're constantly squawking position and everything else. And I can also take that data and superimpose it on the GPS map on the iPad. So there's a lot of flexibility. This is just a quick filler spot <laughs> I have had questions about what I keep in the van right now like I said it's not loaded we will be loading it up here pretty soon back door is always my first aid kit um, trying to find a better bag I like this one because I can just grab and go with it I have all the basic CPR masks shears basic first aid kit ice pack um, fly patch up there for streamers and etc typically my rods are hung through these little loops up over the front clothing bar up front and then I made light of these the other day these are my little straps with the little s beaners on them um, all the way up I have two on the driver's side one on the passenger side and that's kind of how I load things you can see my hammer right there <laughs> steak hammer my pack so I always have a headlamp in the back unlike John I don't like to leave them stretched around your seat cushion tops because I have seen where the bands stretch out over time and when you need it it doesn't fit so <laughs> I typically have one of mine hanging here at all times I'm ready to go and the other so now I'm talking about the van electrics. The one question was, I had mentioned modifications to the electrics in the back um, for the van. Currently, the van comes by its or automatic, you know, from the factory, with one cigarette lighter plug at the back. Typically, I have either I have something stuck to this by. It doesn't belong to be there. It doesn't need to be there. I have a small Samsung tablet and I have the magnetic backer on it to hold the to hold the tablet. And this is a charge base with two USB outputs. So typically the nights have stayed in the van. This is mounted here with the tablet stuck to the front of it. Um, additional electrics modifications are going to be right here a panel mounted with four USB outlets switchable individually a battery meter 
and a standard cigarette plug. It will be a panel mount here. I'll put a picture up of someone else who has done the same modification. This van has a separate set of electric runs that come back here. Hold on, let me take that panel out. So you can see now with that panel removed, the electric sub-panel will go here. And then down here are a lot of additional electrical runs that are typically used for the commercial version of the Transit Connect. And we will be tapping out to its own breaker, or to its own uh, fuse, and or several fuses to power that panel right there. So the Transit Connect is a very flexible vehicle if you want to get into uh, modifying them. It's almost like they're built to be, <laughs> well, because it serves as both a commercial and a um, personal vehicle. There's a lot of capability in the van that may not be enabled in the uh, personal vehicle uses, but yet it starts out as the same body, so all the electrics are pre-ran. They're just not utilized. So there you go. All right, I'm going to switch over and we'll talk about that solar panel next. Okay, so this is the next little piece of kit. I, talk, I said I would talk about these panels that I bought. Um, again, this is not product placement. It's not an advertisement. I bought these for myself for a specific intent. The kit as it comes is a 10-watt panel. Right here it is a foldable, flex, flexible, yet hard panel. It's quite stiff. The panel inner connection is handled in the hinges. Backside it has a USB plug, as you can see with a miniature charge controller. And they come with the little battery pack, which I'm trying to look at the sides right now. This one is 2500 milliamp hour. So you can see it's a very small, compact package, just to give it to you. Here is an iPhone 6 for comparison. <laughs> they're not very big. Fold it up when they're opened up. Now you can kind of see the size of them. Hang on just a minute, and we're going to switch over. I'm going to plug in current meter, voltmeter. I will plug in a USB cable and then plug it into the iPhone. I don't know how well you can read that right now, but we are generating 5.04 volts, 0 0.06 amps currently with no load. So what you're seeing is the now it's zero amps. Now you're reading the, it's just the phantom load from that meter. So hang on a minute and I will hook up the iPad. And unfortunately, the iPhone is fully charged. <laughs> but currently, we are running 4.97 volts, 0.66. As I change the angle, you're not really going to be able to see this because of the camera. If I get my finger off of the... So now 4.98, 4.91. So yeah, we are generating, it is in fact charging, but sadly, the iPhone was fully charged. <laughs> Hold on just a minute here. All right, so I switched around to selfie mode. <laughs> so the panel is plugged in. You saw how it's rigged up with the USB, uh, multi. it's a USB multimeter. So I can read voltage and current um, anywhere up to three amps so it's a very small meter but it works perfect for things like this for testing I'm using the box to hold the panel at roughly a 45 degree angle I need to be a little bit higher the iPhone itself sadly is currently fully charged but this is the only connection <laughs> and you'll hear it as I plug it in so you can tell we are getting a charge. Sadly there's not low enough voltage or low enough charge on the phone to see where I'm at but I can go to yep 
Yeah, the battery's fully charged. But yeah, you can see it actually is. I don't know if it'll focus, but it actually is charging. <laughs> but yeah, that's the Renogy. These are the 10 watts, so it's the E-Flex 10 panel. These do get warm. I don't know if you've ever used solar panels before, but they do get very, very warm. Don't panic. <laughs> the kit itself comes with a couple small carabiners so that you can hang the panel somewhere. It also comes with four suction cups so you could mount it either through the window or with the cup this way on the window or a metal surface. One note to think about if you're charging from your vehicle and you want to leave the panel inside or even in your home and you want to leave it inside the window. If you have any UV protection in the glass, so if it's argon filled with the membrane to prevent the passing of ultraviolet light, you won't be able to charge. However, good incandescent bulbs, some fluorescence, you can charge off of those too. You won't necessarily get the full current but you can still charge your devices. Um, the weight of the panel, so yeah, like I said, the capability is 10 watts of power out of the panel. It's the max output. Weight is 380 grams. It is a monocrystalline panel. Total output capability is five volts at two amps maximum. Size, you can see roughly it's, uh, 241 millimeter by 310 millimeter by 3.3 millimeter thick. I will put that in English across the bottom of the screen for those of you who have no concept of metric. The power bank that comes with this particular kit, 2500 milliamp hours, weighs 62 grams. Max output is five volts at one amp. So it'll charge most devices or at least keep up. Um, for the, for the capability of that charge. I got these actually on sale. They were, I'm not sure what the normal price is. I wanna say it's around 25 to $29. Again, I'll put that on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> but yeah, overall it's a really nice day today. Um, I kinda of like sitting outside talking to you guys, but like I said earlier, the format is up to you. You tell me what you want. Um, I'll leave that off. I was going to turn on that fill light, but it's good. <laughs> and that's it. So I'm going to finish up here. We'll get this video out to you this evening. And let me know what else you want to talk about. Raspberry Pi stuff coming up soon. Tomorrow we will probably do a sit down and make a cup of coffee talk. Um, don't know what yet. I'll pick one of the topics you guys have asked about. We'll sit down. I'll make a coffee. Maybe make some bean soup, <laughs> do some backpacker meals or something like that, um, just just for a little bit of variety. Gets me outside too, and that depends on the weather tomorrow. All right, guys, see you later. Be well. Be good. Be well. Catch you later.